Queensland, in the northeast of Australia, boasts some of the world's most magnificent beaches and pristine oceans, and is home to the world's largest living organism, the Great Barrier Reef. It is also a land boasting World Heritage listed rainforests and picturesque national parks with magnificent flowing rivers. And a new tented village has been established in the small town of Tully in the Cassowary Coast region of tropical North Queensland in anticipation of competitors arriving from around the planet ahead of the 2019 World Rafting Championships powered by Experience Co. Excited locals are out in force for the athletes parade down the main high street. Each Tully local shop has adopted an international team for the week, culminating in a spectacular, if wet, opening ceremony. Whitewater rafting competition is perhaps one of the most inspiring competitions that you can witness. Because not only must the athletes compete against each other, they also must face the challenges that nature throws in their path. And we're all experiencing one here today with the river falling out of the sky. Without the rain, we wouldn't have rivers, so bring it on. Bring it on. The 2019 IRF World Rifting Championships is officially open! The governing body of the sport worldwide is the International Rafting Federation who selected this remote Queensland location for its spectacular scenery and a raging and testing river. Every year we hold the World Championship and the World Championship is where we bring all of our members together. They have national uh, selection events to, to find the best teams in their nation and then they all come together. Uh, we try to select uh, uh, really spectacular locations with really great challenging rivers and put together a great force for them so we can determine who's going to be the best uh, in the world in this sport. We have four different disciplines uh, that help us determine that. We'll start off with a sprint race action, which is used as a time trial to determine matchups in the next discipline, which is a head-to-head, -head, where two boats go against each other and run through a course around buoys. Uh, that's a knockout event determining uh, the best teams in that particular discipline. And then we we'll move on to what we call the slalom event, where we have gates that are hanging uh, in the river, upstream and downstream gates, and that's also a timed event and each team gets two shots at it to get the best uh, possible time. And then the final event, which gets uh, uh, a lot of points in the overall score, is the downriver, which is a traditional uh, race where we match up teams, uh, usually anywhere from four to eight teams on the river at one time in, in groups, in pods, and they all run down uh, at a time. And then at the end of those four disciplines, each discipline, you're gonna get a, a certain number of points, and those points are all added up to determine the overall winner. With over 400 competitors from 19 nations, the standard of competition is the best seen to date. Last year's IRF World Rafting Championships were staged in Neuquén, Argentina, where teams of four pushed themselves through a week of racing in this remote and striking location. The top teams came through to win medals across the four disciplines in each of the different age categories. The top three nations in the Open Women saw Great Britain finish with the bronze overall, while Japan took silver and the gold went to podium regulars, Czech Republic. In the Open Men's category, Japan took bronze, while multiple world champions Brazil were knocked into silver medal position by the Czech team. A brilliant result for Czech Republic, winning both divisions, but can they do it again in Australia? Before the main event, the teams in Australia get the opportunity to drive the hour from the camp deep into the rainforest for their first look at the mighty Tully River. Getting everyone here from around the world for the event has taken years of planning and remarkable cooperation from all levels of government. About uh, 2016 we put in a bid uh, to uh, the International Rafting Federation to uh, go in and get this up and going on this Tully River. This river has been uh, it's had a couple of goes at getting a bid here or IRF World Championships. So this is uh, a successful bid came about. We, had, we were in a contest with uh, Canada, the guys from Quebec. Um, it was a bit of a battle, but in the end they chose the situation for this place. It was what we got here. It's a beautiful river. Cool, not too hot, not too cold. A bit like uh, the porridge, just right. And good water. 
With all the preparation, training and planning done, competitors ready themselves for the first competition discipline, the sprint. All age categories take on the sprint discipline from under 19 to under 23, masters and open men and women. The goal is simple. The fastest run down the course wins. This then determines the seedings in each division for the next discipline of competition and counts towards the overall combined points totals. The sprints begin with the junior teams away first, flat out down the river. The last to start Australia's under-19 men's team knew the time they had to beat and did so with seven seconds to spare. For an impressive gold medal for the host nation, Indonesia takes second place and Czech Republic third. It was gold again for Australia, their under-19 team competing in a division above their age, but recording the ideal start, scoring 100 points towards the overall world championship title. But in the under-23 men's division, Czech Republic are triumphant. Here with a very strong and talented team, over six seconds faster than New Zealand in silver position and Japan who take the bronze medal. Into the Masters men and women divisions for competitors who are experienced at 40 years plus and all tough river competitors, many of them river guides and professional rafters. Australia's women use their local knowledge of the Tally River to great effect, winning over Costa Rica by almost eight seconds and setting a benchmark for their only other rival to meet in the coming days ahead. The highly competitive men's division sees the closest margin so far, Japan coming through to pip Czech Republic into silver medal position, while the Australian team narrowly hang on to bronze after Costa Rica's efforts fall just short of a podium place. And now it's the turn of the open men and women's teams to take on the tally for the first time. And it is close for both divisions. Fastest down the course are New Zealand in 261.06 seconds, just 23 hundredths of a second ahead of Russia. Such are the fine lines at the top of the sport, while Czech Republic have to settle for bronze medal. Off the pace by almost three seconds from the winners, a fabulous result for the Kiwis. But it's business as usual from Brazil. Their strength and depth of talent has brought them multiple world championship titles over the years. And they start the event as they mean to go on. Gold medal position, almost a second quicker than the determined Japanese team, with Russia into the bronze medal position under two seconds behind the winners. But there's disappointment for the last eight teams in the men's division. Czech Republic perhaps shocked by an unusual ninth place after their successes in Argentina last year. It's certainly going to be a hard-fought event, but there is always time for team spirit, camaraderie, friendship and a smile at the end of the day. Coming up, the competition intensifies as the teams get up close and personal with some dramatic head-to-head -head and full-on battles on the raging River Tully in Queensland, Australia. Welcome back to Tropical North Queensland, Australia, where over 400 competitors from 19 nations have arrived into the small town of Tully and are enjoying the natural attractions of the Tully Gorge National Park, where the IRF 2019 World Rafting Championships, powered by Experience Co, is revving up for the second discipline, the head-to-head -head contest. But first, time for some fun, and one of the most popular attractions in the area is the opportunity to leave the river behind and head to the skies for an unbelievable experience. Now, time for this new discipline, introduced only in the past couple of years, the head-to-head. -head. With a break in the unseasonal rainstorms, spectators are out in force, lining this spectacular but challenging Tully River. This would be, you described in a rafting terms as a technical grade four river, which means there's a lot of rocks, means there's a lot of drops, and uh, 
a lot of manoeuvring. And the head-to-head -head course has been set in some of the biggest rapid sections. The river swollen even further by the non-stop rain of the past week, making for some excellent rafting conditions. We've got a good even start up the top, where the boats start side by side. And then on the course there's four boys which are set out, and each team has to go around one boy on the left, one boy on the right, their choice. A team of highly experienced judges are here to ensure fairness in every race. So judges are here to be sure that all the teams play with the same rules. So we are there to control that they pass one on the right, one on the left, and also that there's no security penalty, that there's no there's contact between refs, but no aggressive contact. Not only looking after the on river safety, we're also trying to get the boats to where they've got to be, so it's a, it's a massive operation. Pairs of teams meet at the start line, waiting for the starter whistle. From here, it's an electric charge down the course with team to team contact permitted and tactics all in play. Any wrong or late decision, and it's all over. Costa Rica defeat Indonesia in their match to reach the final, while the Australian under-19 men's team takes out the fancy Czech team in the semi-finals. Now we join our race commentator for the action. Charging off the start line, Australia have already opened up a lead in the final. Costa Rica chasing them down as Australia head left on the final set of boys. And the Costa Ricans have gone for a direct blocking move. But Australia have powered up and pushed them off, so a clear to race to the finish for a gold medal leaving Costa Rica in silver medal position. A brilliant show of strength and determination there. In the opening round of the under-23 women's division, Japan knocked Great Britain to advance to the semi-final stage. In the semi-finals, it's desperately close between friendly rivals New Zealand and Australia. Indonesia dominate over Japan to reach the final. The Indonesian team showcasing teamwork. So into the final, it's Indonesia and New Zealand facing off for gold as we rejoin our race commentator. The speed and the technique of the Indonesian team has set them up perfectly. They decide to skip the first set of boys and push for the final two. New Zealand are back in the game on a tight turn around the left boy. But they can't get the inside line and Indonesia break away, crossing the river and into the shallow water of the final boy. And they're around. Gold medals for the Indonesians. A very welcomed victory. Barusan telah pertandingan head to head antara Indonesia dan New Zealand. Kita alhamdulillah dapat emas uh, satu dan itu cukup bangga sekali untuk Indonesia. Next up it's the under 23 men and Australia eliminate Costa Rica in the first round, while the Czech Republic endure a fierce battle with Japan, just squeezing through the semi-final to reach the final and a chance of their second gold medal of the event. It's another Aussie Kiwi battle again in the other semi final. New Zealand triumphant. Can they keep going for gold after a silver in sprint the day before? And the final is away. The Czech team has skipped the first boy, while New Zealand go for river right as their opponents try to open up enough room to get round both of the final boys by the finish line. But New Zealand is struggling. The Czech have rounded the left boy and just have the right to go. Here come New Zealand charging down the river, but it looks too late though. And the Czech team is around. A masterful display of tactics as they leave the Kiwis trailing behind. Gold for the Czech Republic. We chose like the, the glasses on the on the end, like eights on the end, the bottom's eight, so it was faster than guys from 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 New Zealand. So I'm we, we are happy. Again. Great battles already in the head-to-head -head discipline, but the rain has returned for the next phase of the competition. As the Masters and the Open teams prepare, having seen the action so far, and planned out their tactics and how to handle this challenging course. It's the two Masters women's teams, Costa Rica facing a tough challenge against the local river expertise of Australia. Key organiser and local Queenslander Linda Davis, Secretary of the Australia Rafting Federation, is on the team and on the water here, paddling for top spot. And they have reached the boys first, but look at this. The Costa Rican team have come through and taken the inside line, pushing the Aussies out and back at the first boy. Uh, crossing the river though, and now the Australians fight back. They've come in on top of the Costa Ricans and buried them. Oh, brilliant move and they're away 
and Costa Rica are done paddling upstream while Australia power away. Uh, and that's it, another gold medal in the bag. It is always so great to race the Costa Rican women. They are a force to be reckoned with and we're just super stoked. Had a beautiful race with them, but we came out winners, so win all. <laughs> with more teams taking part in the Masters men division, competition starts with the quarterfinals. Costa Rica show their years of competition experience and dominate in their match with Mongolia. The USA are knocked out by the Czech Republic. Australia advance over Great Britain and Japan defeat old rivals Russia to reach the semi-final stage and set up two heats sure to set pulses racing. In an exciting semi-final series, Australia take on Japan and it's the Japanese team whose tactics pay off and squeeze through the gap of the boy to go on and advance to the final. While in the second match, the Czech team looked to have the advantage, but coming to the second boy, it all changes. Look at this! They've pushed them out of the river and up the bank! Surely that's not allowed. This is chaos! But the crowd are loving it. The Costa Rican team broke the rules and are disqualified. Oh, Stroo, what drama have we got here? So, Czech Republic will face Japan in the all-important gold medal final. There they go, a frantic paddle for speed. The right side of the river seems to be favoured and Japan have taken advantage of the stronger flow to seek out a narrow lead. Oh, what a great shot. Look at the intensity of this. It's literally head to head. And then across the river, no problem, Japan looking strong here. Japan have held on and are now out into the flow and gone. It's gold for Japan and they are delighted. It's a pretty tough race, you know. So we we against Australia in the same final. They yeah, they beat almost beat us, but we finally we beat them. And then Czechs pretty strong as well, so pretty tough, tough race. A break in the weather and the sun is out in tropical North Queensland, where the rainforest meets the reef. This gorgeous national park looking even more stunning. But the pressure is on as next it's the open men and women's head-to-head -head contests. We're pretty excited to be competing against the open Russian team. They are a very fast and experienced team. So uh, yeah, we're excited to see how it's going to go. But the quarter-final match sees Russia advance over Australia, while Japan disappoint Great Britain. Costa Rica lose out to the powerful Czech team and New Zealand overcome the USA, leaving four teams to fight for a place in the final. It's Japan on river right against Russia and they're off. Nothing separates them down these first hundred metres or so. They are literally raft to raft with Japan being pushed sideways. But they've cleared their lines through this top section and gone straight for the last set of boys as Russia holds back ready to bounce. But Japan have held on with the Russians now trailing and they stretch out their lead to cross the flow. Japan looks to be holding their own here. Russia is struggling and it's Japan rounded safe now and into the final. So will it be silver or gold for this popular Japanese team? Semi-final two, Czech Republic have the far side of the course with New Zealand river right and again this right side has paid off with the stronger flow and the New Zealand girls have opened up a huge gap in a short space of time. They two have ducked the first set of boys and gone for the last pair, safe through the first and now across the river to the final boy. This is the tough part, paddling upstream with your opponent coming at you fast, wait for it and look at the technique here. Perfect from New Zealand, their timing was immaculate. A brilliant dodge from New Zealand as they round the boy into the main flow, and it's a comparative cruise down to the finish line now. What a result from the Kiwi women. It was awesome. Good scrap at the start, good scrap around the first boy. It was a scrap right to the end. So it's a tough final matchup. New Zealand take on Japan for the points, the medals, and the glory. And that's coming up soon. But first, we join the Open Men's Division for the opening heats and some top seeds are facing a monstrous battle. We will start uh, against uh, Brazil, so uh, it couldn't be worse. <laughs> the best is uh, to beat them uh, on start uh, line and uh, afterwards uh, to provide our own line. 
but wasn't to be. czech republic lose to the formidable brazilians in the opening round, a huge dent in their chances for the overall world title. the popular norwegians are dumped out by australia, while most favourites advance to the quarter-finals but here the competition steps up a gear japan overcome hosts australia, germany loses out to new zealand while russia end indonesia's hopes but sensationally in the last quarter-final china knocked the mighty brazil out of the competition a result that no one would have bet on going into this what now for brazilian hopes of an eighth world title here we go then new zealand against japan and the japanese have the right side of the course at the start new zealand are trailing through this top section but hanging in tight where they need to be it's a handbrake turn round this first boy at the top end of the course and the Japanese have managed beautifully. The Kiwis are trapped behind them, no way past yet. And here they come across the flow to the final boy. Oh, but they've lost the flow there. The river's pushing them backwards. And look at this, one of the New Zealanders is out of his raft. He's pulling it round ahead of Japan in this shallow water. This is unbelievable. A real safety concern here with everybody out and frantically trying to get around this boy. That's it though, Japan are through. No rules actually broken there, it could have gone very wrong, but it's Japan who advanced to the final and what a battle that was. That will be long talked about. Russia take on China now, China on river right and they must be ecstatic after knocking out Brazil. What a confidence boost that'll have been. And they've got the advantage here, great work from the Chinese team, and Russia are struggling to keep up. They're using all their strength, but the Chinese are powering away. They're over and onto the second boy, and Russia are left behind, it's all over. China make the turn, and it's a sprint to the finish. And what a result for China, into the final and a guaranteed a medal. So two fabulous semi-final matches, and it's a Japan versus China final. And it would have been a brave person to have put money on that lineup ahead of the competition. So, in this spectacular setting, first, it's the Open Women's Final. Japan take on New Zealand. And here we go, the big one. The Kiwis have river right, Japan on the left. And down this top section, they're neck and neck, bow to bow, until New Zealand edge way, just a metre in it. And they dive straight for the furthest two boys of the course, with Japan chasing them down. Big gamble here, a gold medal is on the line. It looks as though New Zealand edged a little further ahead through that section as they line up for the first boy rounding. Lots of power and technique here as Japan ram into them. But they've kept the momentum going. And the Japanese team can't sneak through. Great defense from the Kiwis. Across the river safely to the final boy. And this is the shallow section right on the riverbank. And Japan have hit them sideways. Front left on the Kiwi raft is out and pulling them around. We saw that before, not against the rules, and it's made that fraction of a difference. Their nose is round now, and they make the turn, and Japan seems stuck on the bank. It's all over. Japan can only chase, but there's no chance of catching now. To light for New Zealand, gold medals, and a valuable 200 points towards the overall world title. So our race was against the world champions for our sex, which is Japan. Uh, we came silver to Japan two years ago, so to be able to race against them, and they've been in this event uh, for many years, as, as we have, so it's just really nice to um, have friends that you're racing against, but obviously um, fierce competitors. A chance for Japan in the men's open final, though, facing China on the far side of the river, and this is sure to be a big challenge. Through the top section, both teams are side by side, and just like the women, they've both skipped the first set of boys, putting everything on a quick rounding for the final boys. And look at this, they've split, one gone left, one right, so this could be fireworks when they cross. Japan opts for the shallow water first, but it's for sure slower, and China have already made the rounding on the left side and come across. This is gonna be super close. China's gamble has paid off, they've done it. They were quicker on the second boy than Japan, and they are breaking away as the Japanese are still going. Brilliant tactics and a brilliant result for China. Gold medals, what a race. And how about that? Their first ever rafting world title goal. So another wonderful competition here on the Tully River in tropical North Queensland. As competitors and spectators make the journey back to Tully and the event village for a night of celebration and medal ceremonies enjoyed by all.
Coming up, the action continues in tropical North Queensland on the Tully River with a testing and challenging slalom competition where only the best technical experts can win. At the IRF 2019 World Rafting Championships, powered by Experience Co. The world's top teams are in Queensland, Australia for the IRF 2019 World Rafting Championships powered by Experience Co. And it's the halfway stage with two disciplines completed. 19 nations are represented here in this beautiful World Heritage National Park, just a stone's throw from the Great Barrier Reef, a destination the world governing body had long hoped to visit, having staged events around the planet for many years. The IRF started out of a peace initiative that began uh, in 1989 between uh, Russia and the United States right near the end of the Cold War. It began from that and a proposal was made to bring rafters from around the world together and a first competition was held on the Chulia Rally in Siberia. And over 50 teams came from around the world and that was the first international rafting competition. Eventually, uh, coming up in 1997, it was decided we really needed to form a governing body uh, with, a, with a set standard for rules and judges and so forth, and so the IRF was created uh, for that reason. The ultimate goal uh, at this stage of the game is to one day be an Olympic sport. The door seems to be opening up more for new adventure type sports, especially those that are appealing uh, visually and appealing to youth. So we feel like we have a pretty good uh, shot at one day becoming an Olympic sport. Now the event swings into a new stage of competition, which is certainly the most technically challenging of all. Today is the slalom event, which is uh, very much a technical teamwork event. So there's a series of gates, uh, poles that are hung over the river, and the paddlers have to go through those gates, either in a downstream or an upstream direction. If the poles are green, they have to go down through those poles in the direction of the current flow. And if they're red poles, they have to turn around and face upstream. If not all the paddlers make their way through the gate, they get a penalty of 50 seconds that's added to their time. And if they touch one of the poles, uh, but still make it through, they still get a penalty of five seconds. So they'll run the course twice, and the best run of their two runs is the one that's counted for the final result. The winner of the slalom is the team with the fastest time after running down through the course and adding on any penalties that they might have. With the unseasonable rain brought by a recent tropical cyclone continuing to swell the river's power, this section of the Tully River was chosen a long time ago for the slalom, and now it's even faster and more powerful with some rapids that are going to be tough to handle. The under-19 men's event is a great start, though Indonesia are the closest so far to a flip, while local favourites Australia take it further still on their second run. So we're going through the gates well and then we got to gate 9, just missed it and then when we came up to gate 10, as we got through it fine but as we were coming around I think we went a bit far into the hole and just swept up and both of them up flipping going downstream. However, the Czech Republic again showed their depth of talent as on their second run they incur only 15 penalty seconds. So even though they are relatively slow down the course, their technique bags them a top position ahead of Australia in second. The under-23 division shows the fine balance between speed and accuracy that is needed to win. Indonesia's women get the balance right though, with a fast second run and just enough penalties to pip the team from Great Britain into silver medal position, while Japan take the bronze medal. New Zealand nearly flip on their second run and lose half their crew over the side, but fortunately all are recovered safely. So, gold for Indonesia and a very enjoyable silver for Great Britain, and Japan perhaps a little disappointed with bronze. In the men's division, there are some cautious first runs as they get to grips with the gates. Australia setting the fastest time, but incurred heavy penalties with some mistakes. New Zealand have a solid first run, but really nail their second run with some excellent manoeuvring to complete the course in 3 minutes and 10 seconds, incurring only 60 penalty seconds to put them in first place. Australia are on course and out to beat them, but it's not going well. Racking up penalties, and despite their best efforts, it's not enough. The Czech Republic team's first run is good enough to secure the silver medal, with Australia having to settle for bronze but it's another gold for the Kiwi team. 
Despite the rain, spectators have made the long journey to this beautiful rainforest to come and watch the action as the Masters Division takes on the Tully. The two women's teams of Costa Rica and hosts Australia show some fabulous technique down the river as Costa Rica post a slower first run but pick up the pace on their second despite considerable penalties. All the expectation is on Australia who know every rock in this river and are being super careful to minimise penalties through the gates. And that's enough to secure another victory over the visitors. Another gold medal result for the team. But the Costa Ricans remain hopeful. We will still have one more event, which is the Down River. Uh, we are really good in the Down River. I think we are light. We know really well how to run the rapids and find the faster line. So we still have one more event to try to give them the gold from them. The Masters men competition always proves close with eight teams vying for the medals. The experienced Russian team enjoy a good first run, but their second run is even faster, with just 20 penalty seconds to add, making them a strong medal contender. Czech Republic are slalom specialists and make the point with a perfect first run. Zero penalty seconds. The first team to achieve this and therefore take the lead. Their second run doesn't go so well, however, as they are slower and hit gates along the way, but they are surely set for a medal now. But Japan record the fastest first run at 1 minute 51 seconds and with just 10 penalty seconds and their second run is 2 seconds faster still, again with only 10 penalty seconds to add. That's enough to secure the gold medal for Japan, but it's a super narrow margin, just 3 tenths of a second making the difference after penalties. So into the open divisions and teams have been watching through the day and are perhaps a little apprehensive. Everything's a bit more a bit technical, there's a bit of flat, um, yeah, and the scenery is amazing. And into the competition for the women's first runs. The teams are all coping pretty well. The pattern of fast runs but heavy penalty seconds proving to be the case again. Japan are through in 2 minutes 15 seconds with 60 penalty seconds to set a good standard. The Czech Republic are 9 seconds behind though, also with 60 penalties. But New Zealand get down quickly and with just 15 penalty seconds and look certain to be on the money here. We've just had a really good slalom run down the staircase rapid on the Tully River. Um, uh, at this stage we are sitting in first place for the first run but that sort of means nothing. Um, we're really pleased with what we did, we, ha we made all of the gates, we were pretty smooth in our own minds and we hope to do the second run even better. And it is New Zealand who topped the board after the first run, even though they were eight seconds slower down the course than the Japanese. But that excellent technique with fewer penalties gives them the edge at the halfway point. So into the second runs. The Czech team takes it slower and more carefully now, a calculated decision to try and improve from third place. They get through incurring just 15 seconds of penalties for gate touches, and a time of 2 minutes 23 seconds puts them in a strong position. Japan are on the course, here paddling upstream through gate 5 and cleanly through. Further down at gate 12 to 13, it's an offset gate slightly on the rapid. Was that a touch as they exited? And on through 14 to the finish. A great run of 2 minutes 18 seconds and just 20 penalty seconds to add. And here are the leaders after the first run. New Zealand on course, but they touch gate 7. Traversing here across to 8 and another touch. Paddling upstream through gate 9, red and onto the final stretch of three gates and it looks like all cleared through them and it's a quick run of two minutes 15 seconds only 10 seconds to add new zealand's second run clinches it though they led after the first and take it up a notch on the second run 13 seconds clear of japan in the silver medal position but look at the czech republic they must be devastated just five tenths of a second the difference between silver and bronze medal positions The slalom course set has been testing the teams and now it's the open men who prepare to take on the tully. 
Spectators are out to watch the two runs as the action gets underway. The standard of competition as expected is top class with fast, accurate runs. The Russian team complete their first run in 1 minute 50 seconds and have a clean score without incurring a single penalty just to underline their skill through all 14 gates. The only team to achieve this, three teams including Costa Rica, Czech Republic and Brazil compete with just a 5 second penalty each and China record a run of 1 minute 46 seconds but hit two gates for a 10 second penalty. Brazil are masterful however, the fastest run, a second quicker than China and just the one gate touch puts them in a strong position. But Romania get it all wrong and the whole team ends up swimming. So it's Russia that head up the leaderboard and they have posted a very strong time. Brazil and China are faster but incurred penalties, so the margin is just two one hundredths of a second. The pressure is on then and third place Czech Republic are looking for a quicker time. They clean up string through gate five and through the next one and going well, brilliant control. But they hit an earlier gate so do have points against them. Into the final section, and that's a mistake. The back left paddler missed the gate. That's cost them dearly. 50 penalty seconds. Now Brazil are on their way, presently in silver medal position, but fast and clean through gate four. Excellent turn into gate five. There's a lot of power here. And they are very quick and clear through gate five, no touch, and motoring. Down through 12 and 13, this fast section of the river and into the drop, and clean through the last gate. That's a very fast run, and it looks as though there was just one touch earlier on the course. So leaders from the first run, are they safe after seeing Brazil? They are pretty sure to medal after that brilliant first run, but they have to give it their all now. Nothing is decided, everyone is going quicker. That looked like a touch, but no penalty. Into gate five, the upstream red, and they were going backwards for a second there. Onto the final section, and they haven't made a single mistake yet. Zero penalties on both runs, an outstanding performance. The wait is over. After all the calculations and penalties are added, and leaders Russia are dumped into the silver medal position by Brazil. They set a blistering time and touched just one gate against the perfect run of Russia, but it was slower, and so the Brazilian team has not only taken their first gold medal, but added 350 points towards the overall world title ranking. China also had a very fast and accurate run to secure bronze, overtaking the Czech Republic by just over a second. Hosts Australia were 11th, but had a solid second run and improved by two places. Second race, it's uh, better for us, we're better more strong, and uh, we have a, a better, better run of the first. And uh, the results for us is very good because we won this, this slalom, and uh, we need this for start tomorrow the Don River in the first place uh, and to do a, a, a good line in the river. So a fascinating slalom competition on the Tully River, contested at the highest standard possible. And as everyone begins the journey back to the village, thoughts are indeed now focused on the final day and the Blue Ribbon Downriver race to come. First the medal ceremonies to celebrate the achievements and successes of the day. This is one party night that doesn't run late, because tomorrow it's the Downriver Race, an utterly exhausting 10 kilometre sprint that will decide the final medal positions. And who are the IRF 2019 World Rafting Champions, powered by Experience Co. The Tully Gorge National Park in Queensland, Australia is hosting the IRF 2019 World Rafting Championships. With over 19 nations and 400 competitors here, and all week they have been getting wet. It's, it's raining. raining! It's raining! It's raining! It's raining! It is a rainforest, but the weather has been unseasonally damp. We've just had a, a mad unseasonal low being at the Coral Sea. Uh, which is finally pushed away, but now this, uh, this low is coming behind it and thought the same thing, but this time now with wind. So now it's cool as well as wet. So it's lovely. But when you are wet, you are wet. So that doesn't deter people from participating in other popular attractions in the area. With the opportunity to leave the rafts behind for some rare fun in the World Heritage Rainforest along the Tully River.
The almost non-stop rain has merely added to the strength of the river as the tension mounts on the final day of the competition. It's the Down River Race, the longest race with 350 points available to the winners, and that is sure to decide who will be crowned as the 2019 World Champions. Today is the Down River. The rapids are about 25 rapids. Uh, the length is for about nine and a half kilometres. Imagining they'll be taking about 45 minutes to get through that section in the Opens teams and the Masters teams. Uh, the grading, oh, there's a couple of classic rapids in there, a couple of grade fours, a lot of grade threes, uh, all sorts of rapids from being up to the minefield or the maze, which the teams are having great difficulty with. I'll give you a hint you know, on the maze is you've got to go through it and uh, with not too much speed, you've got to pick your gaps and get the shoots and get the, uh, the crossovers to get into the right section of the rapid. It's the big one, with the juniors starting two kilometres further down the river. And away they go, the start of this long and exhausting paddle, which will take them about 40 minutes to complete. The Australian team will have practised this ahead of the competition, and their local knowledge is sure to give them the edge. But the Indonesian team have them in their sights and are following just close enough behind to be a threat. And now right behind them are the Czech Republic, as the race develops, Australia are extending away and the gaps are opening up. And they hold on. A wonderful race by Australia to take the gold medal podium place. And that's how much it means. Indonesia come through for the silver medal position, a minute and 18 seconds behind, and Costa Rica finished third. Confirmation of the results in a time of 32 minutes and 25 seconds. The Australian Rafting Federation will be very pleased with this, showing the talent they have that can come through and develop further still. The under 23 women begin their race and it's a crowded start line on one side, while Australia have stayed clear on the right side of the river. This first section is critical, which is why Japan are powering away, but Indonesia and New Zealand are right there too. So they've spread a little further down the river, Japan picking the lines through the rapids, and Indonesia waiting for any mistakes so they can come through. And look at this finish! After more than eight kilometers, a three-way race for the line, and New Zealand have done it! But the under-19 Australian team takes silver by a second. They got past Indonesia in the final section. What a result! Three seconds, the margin between first and second, but super close for third. Such are the fine margins at the top. Early leaders Japan will be disappointed to finish last. The under-23 men has been highly competitive across all disciplines, but the Czech Republic have dominated. Five teams on the start line, and the Czech team take the centre of the river, with New Zealand on their right. And powering her way through the early sections, it's the Czech team as anticipated, who are setting the pace and leaving behind the rest. Japan, New Zealand and Australia are all close together, and there's some interesting facts as they approach this rock. Quite a battle. But it's the Czech Republic who have the strength to keep up the pace all the way. Clear winners, their third gold medal of the event. We won the marathon race or down the river race per one minute and 30 seconds, so we're feeling really good. Japan come through to take the silver medal podium, a minute and 20 seconds behind the winners, who are 13 seconds ahead of New Zealand who take the bronze medal. With just two teams in the Masters women, Australia are certainly favourites and they leave Costa Rica way behind, finishing almost three minutes faster for the course than their rivals, for a clean sweep of gold medals, winning in all four disciplines. Next up, it's the Master Men. Their race gets away and the Czech Republic set the pace from the start, paddling into the lead with Japan close behind. Having negotiated the fast rapid sections into the final third of the race and there is literally less than a second between these two, the effort really taking its toll on the two leading teams. Australia are presently third, they can close the gap on the leaders. But by the staircase rapid, Japan have broken through and passed the Czech team. The final rapid section called the minefield and the Czech team have somehow managed to come back and retaken the lead. Now Japan threw this big drop at takeout in a big effort to regain the lead. But the Czech Republic hold on and finish just over five seconds ahead of Japan with Australia taking the bronze medal position. 
moving into the final phase of the event, it's the men and women open divisions for the final two races here in Tully. The best thing about the Down River, I think, is that it tests you physically, cerebrally um, and as a team, uh, especially on a river like this because it's so technical and, and with the water a little bit higher, very fast. And the women start their 10km challenge and into the lead, it's the Japanese team at the front of this pack, followed by New Zealand and Czech Republic. In between the main rapid sections, there are long flat runs where choosing the right line can make all the difference. And the Japanese team are keeping up a solid stroke, followed by a little behind by New Zealand and then the Czech Republic. Japan bouncing through, staying in control, the Kiwi team chasing hard but running out of time in second. Japan are piling on the pressure and extending away through the minefield. And it's Japan who have a clear lead as they power down to the finish line, utterly exhausted, but a gold medal in the bag. And taking the silver medal is New Zealand, who have held their position after some late pressure from the Czech Republic team, who came through to clinch a third. Delight all round, and what a way to finish their event. Japan competed the course with a 23 second margin, just underlying that fabulous effort, keeping up the rhythm for over 49 gruelling minutes. The Czech team, nine seconds behind the Kiwis. It was hard the whole way, really close. All three teams were, um, yeah, really close together. We got off the start line second and we maintained that position, so we're pretty happy. Just the final race that will decide the overall world champions for the Open men, and it's between Brazil, Russia and China. They are racing in two groups, the leading teams away first together. And out of the blocks, it's New Zealand who have sprinted off the start line, leading the column of rafts through, followed by Russia, the Czech Republic, Germany and in sixth place it's Brazil. Can they come back from what could be a disastrous start? But it's early days in this long race. As they progress through the sections, the Kiwi men are setting a fast, exhausting pace. The Russian team still in contention, and there's a close contest between China and Japan. The Kiwis bump their way down the staircase. Russia second, but here is a change. Japan are under pressure from Brazil, and they pass Japan on the staircase. Russia into the drop and cleanly through. And here are Brazil, in third, just ahead of Czech Republic and Japan. This could be a close finish. Kiwi team have done it. They've held their lead. Non-stop pressure leading from start to finish. Their tactics have paid off. They knew they had the strength and perseverance to do it. And there it is. The Down River Gold Medal for New Zealand. It's silver for Russia. Another powerful display. And that could prove critical in the overall positions this week. Third for Brazil. They would have hoped for gold. Real specialists in this event. But nothing could stop New Zealand. When we sat off, we had a pretty sneaky little line down the hard right side of the river. It actually looked like it was kind of blocked off. There's a tree branch lying across a gap, hard river right. Um, and we were like, well, everyone's in a cluster in the middle of the river and they're going to have a battle. So you're not going to have either people on either side of the raft paddling. So we literally just cleaned it, pulled out straight in front, straight off the start, didn't touch anyone with 10 metres away from anyone before we even like entered the first rapid. Uh, ficamos em terceiro no Down River, foi uma disputa bem acerrada, desde a largada, foi bem difícil, ficamos para trás várias vezes, mas ainda conseguimos lutar até o final e tirar uma terceira colocação e a gente sai feliz com esse resultado. It was a long and testing race for all the teams. In the top half of the results, almost 45 minutes of pure adrenaline for New Zealand to win. 34 seconds the margin from Russia, with Brazil a further 50 seconds behind them. Nepal will be pleased with 6th place, but the Czech team will be disappointed not to medal in this discipline. China, having won a gold medal earlier in the week, finishing 13th, and the hosts Australia finished 11th. It's the final awards ceremony and the closing party back in Tully, and spirits are high despite the river falling from the sky. The final results have been calculated now too. 
In the junior men's division, it's home team Australia who had quite a week, surviving a flip but going on to become the 2019 world champions, ahead of Indonesia and the Czech Republic. The overall under women's world champions are Indonesia, beating New Zealand and Australia into second and third positions. A huge achievement for these girls and for the sport in their country. The men under 23 division was dominated by Czech Republic, an outstanding performance by them to scoop three gold medal wins ahead of New Zealand and Japan. In the Masters women division, the only two teams enjoyed the competition, but hosts Australia were never beaten by Costa Rican team across the four disciplines. But what a battle there was in the Masters men division, with multiple winners Australia and the Czech Republic going all out, but unable to stop a determined Japanese team, who become the new world champions. The Open Women division saw a raging contest between the top teams, New Zealand winning it from Japan and the Czech Republic. But in the Open men's team, it was a consistent performance from Brazil that saw them take another IRF world title. They won two out of four disciplines, which added up to top place over Russia, with New Zealand third. After the medal ceremony, next is a ceremonial handing over to the next World Championship event, which will take place at Ziwan in China, as one event closes and the new one takes over. So as proceedings conclude in beautiful Queensland, Australia, it's the final party of the 2019 IRF World Championships, powered by Experience Co. It's been a wet one, but the spirit of competition, the skill and the fun factor has been simply unbelievable. The teams came from all over the world to try and tame the roaring Tully River. Some achieved it better than others, but for most, just being able to enjoy the magnificent river that keeps on giving was enough. Join us next time in China.